Hi, do you want to go to gang talk but don't know anything about it? Maybe you know some things or maybe you know everything but you're just here because you like me. Well, if any of the options check your box, then this is the video for you. Let's get started. So where is gang talk? Gang talk is the capital of the northeastern state of India called Sikkim. It is also the headquarters of the eastern district of Sikkim. It is situated in the eastern Himalayan range at an altitude of 5410 feet from sea level. So how can you reach Gangtok? To reach Gangtok, first of all you'll have to reach North West Bengal in any of these three cities or towns. Shiliguri, New Jalpaiguri or Bagdogra. From Shiliguri and New Jalpaiguri, you can get share cabs for around rupees 350 per head. But get ready to be squished as 10 people will be fitted in one big vehicle like a Tata Sumo or a Bolero. From Bagdogra Airport, you can get a cab either for Shiliguri or to Gangtok. From any of these three places, if you go to Gangtok directly in a private cab, then it's going to cost you somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred rupees. So now that you've reached Gangtok, what do you do over here? You check into a hotel or a homestay or a hostel. There are a plethora of different accommodations available in Gangtok. from which you can choose starting from 700 rupees per night for a two bedroom up until 20000 rupees the choice is totally up to you there are hotels at the center near mg mark and also present on the outskirts of the city where the views are amazing so the next question comes how do you reach these hotels well you can book cabs which are slightly expensive in gangtok as this is the center of the whole state of sikkim and it's going to cost you about 150 rupees for around 2 kilometers So once you've checked into your hotel, you want to do some sightseeing. There are many places where you can go for sightseeing, starting with monasteries. Visiting the monasteries in and around the city are one of the most popular things to do in Gangtok. The structures are stunning examples of Tibetan architecture and give you a glimpse into the religion's deeply spiritual worldview. You can go to the Rumtek Monastery, which is about 10 rupees per person and stays open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Sukla Khang which doesn't have any entry charge and stays open from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. or the Enchi Gompa which also doesn't have any entry charge and stays open from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. This Enchi Gompa is the oldest and basically this is the gompa around which the whole of Gangtok has been built. The next thing you can do is enjoy the beautiful sceneries from Gangtok. One of the most popular ones is Tashi Viewpoint. You can go up to the viewpoint and enjoy the beautiful sunset over there. It doesn't have any entry fees at all. It might cost you 10 rupees if you want to look through some binoculars or telescope. The third thing to do in Gangtok is visit the Namgyal Institute of Tibetology. Whether you are a Buddhist or not, a visit to the Namgyal Institute of Tibetology will leave you richer with its huge collection of spiritually and culturally important Buddhist artifacts, relics, books and manuscripts in the ancient Lepcha script among others. One of the best known things to do in Gangtok is a visit to this institute/museum. This is at Diodali in Gangtok and stays open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Saturday. It stays closed on Sundays and on government holidays. It will cost you around 10 rupees per person. The next fascinating thing to do in Gangtok is take a ride in the cable car. Gangtok has a lot of residential and commercial buildings and you have to take a cable car ride to get some of the fascinating views of the modern city and the beautiful nature around it. This is a big to do thing in Gangtok and the cable cars are operational from 9:30 am to 4:30 pm every day. It's going to cost you around 110 rupees for adults and 70 rupees for kids. Means 3 to 6 years. Kids under 3 can go for free. If you decide to bring a camera over here, you'll have to pay an extra 100 rupees. But don't worry, cell phones don't count. The next thing you can do is go to Hanuman Tok. According to the ancient epic Ramayan, Lord Hanuman was bringing back the Sanjeevani booty from the Himalayas and he stopped here to get some rest. The Hanuman Tok shrine was built in his honor and is a beautiful structure that offers a sense of calm and blesses the devotees who come here from all over. Visiting this temple is definitely one of the things to do in Gangtok and it is free. It stays open from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Another thing you can do in Gangtok and you can spend the whole day over here is the Himalayan Zoological Park, basically Gangtok Zoo. It is spread over 205 hectares of forested mountain terrain and this zoo is home to a variety of Himalayan fauna like the nearly extinct red panda, the snow leopard, the monal pheasant, 
the palm civets, the black bears and many more. This is at Bulbule in Gangtok and it stays open from 9 am to 4 pm. It will cost around 25 rupees for Indian tourists and 50 rupees for foreigners. The next things to do are exploring Lal Bazaar and MG Mark. Over here you can go to one or more of the many restaurants and try the local food such as churpi and many other things. You can also try some shapta, shampa and thukpas at the restaurants. And also don't forget to try the traditional Sikkimese tea. MG Marg remains open from 8 am to 7 pm but remains closed on Tuesdays. You can even do a lot of shopping over here and if you want to plan some trips ahead, you can do that in one of the many tour agency companies which have shops set up over there. There are also many waterfalls on the outskirts of Gangtok which you can go to like the Seven Sisters waterfall where you can go and have an amazing day and the best time to visit this place is from May to July. The best thing is, this is not going to cost you any extra money. If you want to do adventure activities, there's scope for that as well. The first thing you can do is trekking. Trekking is a big thing in Gangtok and Sikkim and there are many shops at MG Mark and other places to get the appropriate gear. You can also get guides and book the treks directly from Gangtok itself. There are numerous day treks available over here from which you can make a decision. If you don't like walking, you can also book cycling trips that is you rent a bicycle and then head out on the roads while exploring the city you can also get a fancy bird's eye view of the lavish green hills the terraced rice fields and the monasteries in gangtok this is paragliding you can do paragliding from baliman dara or bulbule dara near gangtok and the prices start at 2500 rupees per person and 500 rupees extra if you want to record this in a gopro that they will provide this can be done all year except in July and September. If sky is not your thing and water is, then you can even go white water rafting on the Tista river. This can cost you anywhere from 1000 rupees to 5000 rupees and can be done from October to June. You can also do some zip lining at Banjakri falls and the Bakthang waterfall. So now you know what to do over here. The next question is, when should you go to Gangtok? Well, the peak season is in April, May, during Dasera, during Diwali and during the Christmas and New Year holidays. But basically you can go to Gangtok during any time. The summer, the monsoon or the winter. In the summer, you'll get perfect views and get to take beautiful pictures of the nature all around Gangtok. During monsoons, there might be some road closures in the places around Gangtok but you can still spend an amazing time over there, the weather becomes really romantic. If you go to Gangtok during winter, it's going to be quite cold but extremely fun. If the skies remain clear, you'll get amazing views of every place and if you're lucky, you might even get some snow. You can easily spend 3-4 to four days without leaving the city for anything much. For trekking, it'll usually take you one day or for camping, it'll take you two days and one night. You can do a whole day's trip and go to Somgo also known as Changu Lake along with Baba Mandir and the Nathula Pass which you can book from any of the tour agencies for 1500 per person till Changu Lake and Baba Mandir and 2000 per person till Nathula Pass. But be careful, you're going to get cramped for room again as there's going to be 10 tourists in one car. You can also ride a yak in a yak safari on this serene Somgo Lake and get quite some new followers on Instagram. The permits for going to Nathula Pass and all the other places will be taken care of by the tour agency themselves so you'll have to plan this at least a couple of days beforehand. Now you can also book tours for North Sikkim from Gangtok itself or from Shiliguri which is going to take you around 3 days and 2 nights and is going to cost you around Rs 3000 per person on a 10 people sharing basis in the car. You're going to get food and accommodation along with the sightseeing and the transportation all in one neatly formed package. You can also visit the South and the West districts from Gangtok in a private vehicle. The smaller vehicles which can seat 4 people will cost you around 4000 rupees per day and the big vehicles which can fit around 10 people but is really comfortable for 7 people will cost you 7000 per day. Now the bonus that you've been waiting for. One of the most important things that you need to do before going to Sikkim. This is called the Sikkim travel card. The Sikkim travel card is the new way of traveling to Sikkim. It is a mandatory online card for tourists and visitors to visit Sikkim which has been introduced by the Sikkim government due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It's now part of the new normal way to travel to Sikkim. 
The Sikkim Travel Card, also known as the Sikkim Arrival Card, is free of cost and can be obtained from the Sikkim government website instantly through an online application, link added in description. The objective of this travel card is to enable the Sikkim government to know your personal or your group's health and other tour related details in advance and track the status during your stay in Sikkim so that you can enjoy Sikkim responsibly and safely while ensuring health and safety of the residents of Sikkim. Hope some of this information was valuable to you. If it was, hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video as soon as they're out. Happy travels!